Today, I want to talk about how the ANT lawsuit has just exposed all of the shorts illegal tactics. They've literally just drawn attention to exactly how they're manipulating AMC and they're begging the courts not to investigate. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, this is an extract from the AMC lawsuit just submitted by the Allegheny lawyers. Not the AMC lawyers, but the Allegheny lawyers. They obviously brought this lawsuit on behalf of the shorts trying to deny the reverse split. And they've now just exposed exactly what they don't want the courts to investigate. They obviously don't want the courts to investigate these three separate things because it exposes the entire way these shorts have been shorting AMC and suppressing the price. And obviously they don't want these three things exposed and investigated in a court setting where they would likely be forced to close. So those three things that they're begging the judge for is they're begging the judge not to investigate synthetic shares, they're begging the judge not to hold an AMC share count, and they're begging the judge not to look into the FTX synthetics. Extract number four says theories about manipulation in the stock market. Many objectors focus on market manipulation theories propagated by pockets of the AMC investor community. Specifically, objectors are concerned that synthetic AMC shares have been sold to bail out naked short positions. As the theory goes, these synthetic shares allow the short sellers to cover without having to buy real shares and prevent the mother of all short squeezes. Many believe that this conspiracy includes participants throughout Wall Street and the government. Regardless of their truth, these theories are firmly outside of the scope of the court's assessment of the proposed settlement, and the court should decline invitations to launch its own investigation into these far-ranging issues. So the Allegheny lawyers are now begging the courts not to investigate synthetic shares because it's supposedly out of the court's jurisdiction. But what else are they begging the courts not to do? Well, next up on the list talks about the demands for a share count or for a stockholder list. It says many objectors want the courts to order a share count of AMC equity. It should not do so. While certain objectors claim that the actual share count is unknown or unknowable, the actual number of shares outstanding is known precisely, 519 million shares. They've said creating a definitive list of AMC stockholders at any given moment is practically impossible, even if the court were inclined to order one since the shares are constantly traded. So again, Allegheny and their lawyers are begging the courts not to issue a share count because it would waste time and it'd be difficult to do. And finally, Allegheny are begging the courts not to launch an inquiry into the AMC crypto token. It says some objectors complain that FTX Trading Limited, the disgraced cryptocurrency exchange, created AMC tokens, which they believe aided short sellers of AMC stock. After reviewing thousands of objector submissions and tens of thousands of AMC documents, Plantiffs, AK Allegheny, have not seen anything to suggest that these assertions are supported. Regardless, any claim about FTX or AMC cryptocurrency should be brought into a separate lawsuit if at all. So guys, please don't investigate these AMC FTX tokens. Now again, this last one is very, very interesting. As I mentioned in my video yesterday, the AMC FTX synthetic tokens seem to be on the move once again. Obviously, I spoke about how these AMC FTX tokens had been mirroring the price of AMC pretty much identically through 2021 and through 2022. But at some point between November 19th, 2022 and today, the price of these AMC tokens fell from $4 per token down to only $0.025. So again, it seems like these shorts are still using these FTX tokens to manipulate the price of AMC even to this very day. Guys, with Meme, you can currently get a guaranteed free share of Tesla or of Google, as well as a $100 cash reward, depending on how much you deposit. So guys, be sure to sign up to Moomoo using the link in the description below. Depositing just $100 gets you five free shares and that $100 cash reward. Depositing $1,000, 15 free shares and that $100 reward. Depositing $5,000 gets you 15 free shares, the $100 reward, and a guaranteed free share of Tesla or of Google, which you could always use to buy more AMC or GameStop shares. But again, let's also talk about some very interesting information that I believe truthfully exposes synthetic AMC shares. Tony Denaro just posted this extract of exactly how many AMC postcards were posted by each broker. 
And he said, I don't know if I find it more disturbing that Robinhood did not supply beneficial holder addresses to strategic claim services until May 22nd, or that 1.5 million individual retail investors still have AMC shares in that Robinhood brokerage. As you can see from this list, Robinhood sent 1.5 million names and addresses for the AMC postcards on the 22nd of May. So it's crazy that 1.5 million individual retail investors are still to this day holding AMC shares in their Robinhood brokerage. First of all, if you haven't got out of Robinhood to a different brokerage like Moomoo, I urge you to do it instantly because we know how unreliable Robinhood are. For Moomoo, the link is always in the description below. But the second thing I find really interesting is that Robinhood still has 1.5 million individual retail investors holding AMC on their platform. But the combination of TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard and a few others only has 1.1 million individual retail investors. After that mass exodus away from Robinhood to platforms like Fidelity, TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab, how is Robinhood still having more shareholders than all of those platforms combined? I would have expected Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade and Fidelity alone to have 10 times the amount of shareholders that Robinhood still has holding AMC. So I wonder if Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade and Fidelity and the others did actually report all of their shareholder names or whether this is just a smaller extract. Like how on earth can Robinhood still have 1.5 million investors when the combination of Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity and others only has 1.1 million? I personally think that someone here is lying. Either Robinhood doesn't have 1.5 million investors, or more likely than not, TD Ameritrade, Charles Schwab and Fidelity are lying about the true number of AMC shareholders. Now separately, you may notice that 1.5 million plus 1.1 million plus these extra numbers doesn't total the total 3.8 million. And that's because AMC postcards were only sent to US investors because you don't have any European trading platforms or British trading platforms or Australian platforms or any other countries platforms on this list. So we've obviously got say 2.728, 2.9 million US shareholders and then the extra 1.1 million shareholders are from all other countries around the world. And speaking of that devil Robin Hood, Travis tweeted saying there it is, page 28 of the 10Q on Robin Hood. FINRA is investigating Robin Hood for its fractional shares trades, its reporting of significant options positions to their large option position reporting system and their marketing involving social media influencers. So clearly Robinhood is not reporting its fractional shares being traded appropriately and they're also not reporting their options trading positions appropriately either. And what I found even more interesting is this second paragraph. RHS, which is Robinhood Services, has received requests from the SEC Division of Enforcement regarding its compliance with Regulation SHO's trade reporting and other requirements in connection with securities lending, fractional shares trading, and the quarter 4 2022 processing error. So again, another broker, aka Robinhood, that is not abiding by Regulation SHO's reporting requirements aka another broker that is facilitating synthetic shorting, especially as they're being investigated specifically for securities lending, aka Robinhood is lending out shares to be shorted without having even located those shares. Now this part probably doesn't surprise you because we know that Robinhood is obviously working hand in hand with Citadel, but yet this is just another broker that facilitates that synthetic shorting. And speaking of that devil Robin Hood, it looks like something sketchy is really going down over there. This screenshot says effective August 3rd, 2023, we're changing the dollar amount and frequency limits of certain transactions. The types of transactions that will be affected are ACH withdrawals, ACH deposits, debit card withdrawals, debit card deposits, and instant bank transfers. AK Robinhood are limiting how much you can withdraw from Robinhood and also how much you can deposit onto Robinhood. They're likely expecting some kind of massive, massive move where tons of investors will want to deposit tons of cash to buy into that move in stock or to withdraw tons and tons of profits. So what are they doing? They're limiting withdrawals and deposits to try and reduce the size of this massive, massive move in some kind of upcoming stock. 
again, whether that stock is AMC, whether it's GameStop, or whether it's a completely different stock entirely, is so far yet to be seen. But it's very interesting timing that Robinhood is now deciding to limit their deposits and withdrawals. And as I said, it's also an interesting time that this is happening at the exact same time where Robinhood is being investigated by FINRA for their synthetic shorting reporting. Now you may ask Tom, why are these shorts or why is Allegheny begging the courts not to investigate all of these synthetic shares and synthetic shorting? Well, it's likely because hedge funds are in big, big trouble. As Pick tweeted, US equity funds had their biggest weekly outflow in 10 weeks, in the seven days to June 7th, as investors worried about rising inflation and an economic slowdown pulled out their money. So these hedge funds, these mutual funds, these banks and institutions are having massive weekly outflows and withdrawals, especially over the last week. That's likely because the S&P 500 is reaching maybe the peak of its current bear market rally before resuming the next leg down in the bear market. Therefore, investors have seen this massive pump over the last six months, so they're withdrawing tons of cash from these hedge funds. You can see that if you line up the 2022 market crash and its recovery with other previous crashes, that the 2022 market crash looks like it could still be in crashing mode. Some crashes happened sooner and were over faster like in 2020 and 1987, but some continued for a significantly longer period of time, like 1973 and the year 2000. Even though the market in 2023 has seen quite a recovery since the 2022 lows, we're definitely not out of the water yet. And many investors are thinking clearly that this is a bear market rally, and that's why they're drawing out tons and tons of cash. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.